And a very good evening. Welcome to New Orleans. I'm Andrew Clay. He's Seth Lewis. And this is the Bayou Bengals Championship Preview Show. Tonight, we are talking LSU football as they get to, to take on the Clemson Tigers coming up tomorrow night. This matchup is a dandy one, especially because of the quarterbacks, two of the best that we've ever seen in the college football playoff championship. Joe Burrow, the Heisman winner and anticipated number one pick in the NFL draft versus Trevor Lawrence, the Clemson star who was a Heisman favorite early in the season and will be the favorite next year. Andrew combined these two have thrown for more than 1,400 yards and 137 career passing touchdowns. Two very talented quarterbacks indeed in this matchup. Now coming up in tonight's show, we're going to break down this game with Jarrett Roser of TigerDetails.com. He's going to come up with it a little bit. We're also going to catch up with Rusty Phelps and Travis Etienne as we talk about the Jennings product who plays for Clemson. But first, let's talk about a Lafayette kid who plays for LSU trying to win his first national championship. Yeah, we talked about quarterbacks earlier. They get all the shine. The nose tackle does a lot of the dirty work, the unseen. And that's where we find Lafayette native Tyler Shelvin, who has waited his turn and now is one of the key cogs to a very improved Tigers defense. Grandma, you could make gumbo, but no rice. <laughs> So when I told Tyler that, Tyler said, who ever ate gumbo with no rice? That message from head coach Ed Orgeron to Deborah Silas is how many LSU fans got introduced to her grandson, Tyler Shelvin. Coming out of Notre Dame, the five-star defensive tackle was 383 pounds. Coach O insisted on a diet. I told him, I said, if you want to stay on your diet, I'll do it with you. So we did salads, we did soups. We did low carbs. Shelvin lost around 60 pounds, but over his first year and a half on campus, his weight fluctuated and his playing time was non-existent. He even considered transferring before his grandmother quitting was not an option. He did put it on Instagram and I called him up and I chewed him out. I said, take it off. It was very hard for me. And it was, it was something I had to overcome, I had to deal with. You know, you gotta give it your all. And just because things don't go your way, you quit? No. Unacceptable. From that conversation on, his attitude changed, and so did his result. Now in 2019, the nose tackle is the silent star of the defense. His 39 tackles may not pop off the stat sheet, but his ability to command double teams inside has allowed the Tigers to boast a top 20 run defense in the nation. Towards the end, when I started playing, I learned how to practice, and that's what helped me a lot. We appreciate the work that he does. You know, he plugged up that run, he stopped the run. We're going to get out to the quarterback, too. For Shelvin, this championship is a reward for his perseverance. And for Ms. Silas, it's a reminder that time waits for no one. How can this happen? One of mine's at LSU going to pay LSU football. Now, how can this happen? It's only through the grace of God that he's playing in a national championship. LSU's defense has come to life late. In the final four games, LSU is allowing just 16 points per game. That's a full touchdown less and about 100 yards less than they did in the first 10 games of the year. Also, the Tigers are plus five in turnovers in that span as compared to plus four the rest of the season. Well, great stuff there, Seth. Now, when we come back, it's time to go one-on-one -on -one with Jarrett Roser as we preview the national championship game tomorrow night right here in New Orleans. You're watching the Bayou Bengals Championship Preview Show only on KTC. <laughs> Joe Burrow broke so many records in 2019, but on September 7th at Texas, he recorded his first 400-yard passing game, first of three this year. To date, Burrow sits second all-time at LSU with over 8,000 career passing yards, and he owns six of the school's 10 top passing games. We are back here on the Bayou Bengals Championship Preview Show, and tonight we are joined by Jarrett Roser, of TigerDetails.com. Jarrett, you've been covering this team now for over a decade. How special is this team, and how does it compare to the teams you've seen in the past? Yeah, I mean, I've been telling a lot of people if they go take care of business on Monday night, win the national championship, that you have to look at them in the conversation as the best LSU football team in the program's history, if not the best. The, the way that they've gone through this season in such dominant uh, fashion and broken so many records along the way, first Heisman since the late 50s. It's been an incredible run for that team, and it's it's honestly been a lot of fun to be around and cover and to, to have all of those storylines unfold the way they have and obviously room for a few more on Monday. I want to expand that. You say about the best LSU team ever. 
maybe, maybe the best college football team we've ever seen. I keep telling people I have never seen a college football team like this. Yeah, and when you talk to any coaches, uh, particularly defensive coordinators who are trying to game plan how to slow this offense down, they'll pretty quickly tell you that it's it's in the conversation with any offense they've ever seen. It's a It's been a special group, a special run through this fall. Where do you think Clemson poses the biggest mismatch for this LSU team? Yeah, I, I do think Clemson is the best team that LSU has faced thus far this season, uh, but I don't know it, that it's the best Clemson team that's come through in these recent years. And so I'm interested to see how some things play out up front. Uh, the defensive front for Clemson is not as strong as, say, last year's, and it's, it's tough to do that when you lose three first-round picks up front. Uh, they're going to need to have success getting some push against Joe Brady uh, Joe Burrow up front if, if they want to slow down the offense at all. And on the flip side, uh, they're going to have to protect an LSU defense that has found its pass rush late in the season. They... On offense, Trevor Lawrence, uh, particularly if he's able to run the football the way he did in the semifinal, poses a lot of problems. Travis Etienne, obviously, the just absolute star from Jennings. Uh, people have seen what he's been able to do in some, some big games these past couple of years. And then Trevor's got some good weapons to work with on the perimeter, but they've got to protect him and, and give him an opportunity to, uh, to work with those guys. And... If they don't, it's going to be a long night for Clemson. But if he does have a little bit of time, it may turn into a little bit of a shootout trying to keep pace with uh, Burrow and company. As we've already talked about in this show, LSU's defense playing so well here at the end of the season. He's Jarrett Roser coming on to talk to us about this matchup. He's with TigerDetails.com. He's been covering LSU for now a dozen years. Jarrett, I appreciate you coming on with us tonight. Hey, appreciate you. And when we come back, he talked about him, Travis Etienne. We're going to talk about the Jennings product. We're checking in with him as he's hoping for a little more success than his little brother had here at the Dome a few weeks ago. You're watching the Bayou Bengals Championship Preview Show right here on KTC. In November, LSU got over the Alabama hump with a 46-41 win on the road, marking the Tigers' first win at Alabama since that famed 9-6 victory in 2011. Of course, LSU lost in the national championship just a few weeks later to the tie. LSU went eight straight meetings without beating Alabama. Back here in New Orleans where LSU gets set to host Clemson, and the Uptown Tigers features an Acadiana standout. Yeah, Travis Etienne played for Jennings High School. He was a star over there. He already has a national championship with this Clemson team. But this championship, if he could win another one tomorrow, just be a little more special in front of his home fans. I scored a touchdown in the Dome. He played in the Dome already, and he didn't score a touchdown yet. So it's fun to mess with him about it. The ATN family has already played for one title in the Superdome this winter. Trevor, a Jennings running back, lost in the 3A championship game. Still, he has a leg up on his brother, Clemson star Travis ATN. He definitely go on and on about it. Uh, he, 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 like, he likes to kind of showboat in my face. Shouts out to him. I mean, I can't really talk much smack back to him because I haven't done what he's done. As a sophomore, Trevor has an offer to play at LSU, a school that didn't pay much attention to Travis until the day Coach Ogeron was hired. To give LSU credit, uh, I thought Coach O made up a ton of ground in a short period of time. Travis was the first offer Coach O gave as LSU's new head coach, but almost two months to the day after O was hired, Travis was a Clemson Tiger. For me, it was no bad feelings at all. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business, and uh, you have to definitely just know that in your mind, and I mean, I had to make the best decision for me, not for anyone else. Since arriving at Clemson, Travis has checked off all the boxes, records, awards, and championships, but a second title here in Louisiana could mean just a little more. To uh, come back to my homestead and be able to possibly win a national championship here, which is uh, really great. It's uh, something you couldn't even think of, something you couldn't even script up in a movie. 18 has been so good throughout his career at Clemson. He's just 40 yards shy of 4,000 career rushing yards, and he's just shy of 5,000 total yards. That's rushing, receiving, and return yards. Seth, he's got 61 career touchdowns. He's just a junior. Travis 
has been absolutely amazing. The two-time ACC Player of the Year, and it's very quiet kept. That just speaks to his production. Now, when we return from break, one final block where we go into the LSU championship history and why playing in the Dome means so much to so many of these players. You're watching the Bayou Bengals preview show right here on KDC. <laughs> Joe Burrow won LSU's first Heisman in more than 60 years. The Tigers cleaned up awards this year, winning more than a half dozen of college football's most prestigious awards, including a unique duel of Joe Brady and Ed Ogeron winning coach and assistant coach of the year awards. Back here to put a bow on this show on this Sunday night, Seth, LSU has won all of their national championships here in New Orleans. But this championship, just a little more personal for some of these players. You hear about it all the time in high school football, the road to the dome, playing in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. But for safety, Grand Pitt, playing in this championship game in his hometown of NOLA is a life coming full circle. Just, you know, me being born and raised in New Orleans, you know, moving Katrina, like you said, seeing those pictures of the Superdome, you know, people standing in the Superdome, and, you know, it's, it's falling apart, basically. I'm so happy that we, you know, we got here. It's in, it's in New Orleans. It's, we're doing this for the state. We're doing this for the city. That story resonating with so many in our audience tonight. Now, it's a 7 o'clock kickoff tomorrow night right here in New Orleans. LSU taking on Clemson in the College Football National Championship. Two unbeatens meeting in the title game for the second straight season. That game airing on ESPN. Of course, if you missed any parts of our show, it'll be up on our website, katc.com. But we are out of time here tonight, Seth. So for Seth Lewis, I'm Andrew Clay. Thanks for watching.